Good morning, world. This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the Grace Life Teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this terrific, terrific Tuesday. Hope you guys enjoyed some R and R yesterday on Labor Day, man. You able to rest? You able to reset? You able to spend time with your friends and your family? But I have a word today, man. On this terrific Tuesday, is the fact that things don't just go away. In life, we will experience a tug of war. Tug of war. Have anybody ever played the game tug of war before? I know I have. Has anybody ever had something called field day? Well, I may be dating myself. You're born in the 70s, man. You know in the fifth and sixth grade, man, you look forward to field day where you have food, fun, games, and you play this game called tug of war. And there's a rope and there was um, a knot on both ends of the rope and then there was a part in the rope that one person would pull or one team would pull one way and the other team would pull the other way and whoever pulls that team closer to that line that team would actually win and in life man we have a tug of war not just physically spiritually emotionally financially some of you guys feel like you're in a tug of war right now. Some of you guys feel like you're in a tug of war in your finances, in your marriage, in your relationships, with your coworkers, even trying to find some good employees that want to work in the season. You know, if you see Chick-fil-A is tiring and they struggling to try to find people, you already know there's a tug of war out there. But I want to encourage you, man, that you're not in this tug of war alone. God is with you. His ever-present help is with you. All of us as believers, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And He's our advisor. He's our counselor. He's our parakletos. He's our helper. And we have Him. And oftentimes, we as believers, we don't tap into what we have. It's kind of like you have a whole bunch of money in your bank account, but you done forgot your PIN code. Have you ever had, you know... Um, up your pin code changed. You have money in your account, and then you're putting your card in there. People behind you waiting on you, be like, you know what? Why this person sitting up here? They ain't even had no money in their bank. No, you got money in the bank. You just forgot your pin code. And that's what happens, man. When we don't speak the promises of God over our lives, man, we're not using our pin code to access access our heavenly blessings. And so, so today, I want to encourage you, man. Use your pin code. And your pin code is basically the promises that God has spoke over you. The promises that God has for you in Christ Jesus is yes and amen. It means that you are the head and not the tail. It means that you are a lender and not a borrower. It means that by Jesus Christ's stripes, you are healed. It means that he will perfect everything that concerns you. Those are pin codes that open the door to the heavenly transactions in your life. And sometimes you may feel like you are in a hallway. Have anybody else have been in a hallway before? See, again, I'm going to date myself. You're born in the 70s. You get in trouble. You're talking, and your teacher told you to stop talking one time. You keep talking. Guess what she does? She sends you in the hallway. And the hallway is oftentimes you're alone, you're afraid, and it's embarrassing. And in life, we can find ourselves in the hallways. But guess what I want to encourage you to do in the hallway? I want to encourage you to praise in the hallway. I want to encourage you to have thanksgiving in the hallway because in hallway, spiritually, the hallway is just the space between two doors, physically and spiritually. That's right. A hallway is just a space between two doors. You're getting ready to leave one door. And guess what? You're getting ready to go into another door. So today, if you feel like you're in a hallway of despair, if you feel like you are in a hallway of financial issues, if you feel like you're in a hallway of, of health, if you feel like you're in a hallway of your career, and you don't know which way it's going to go, and God seems silent, He's working in the background, beloved. God is working on your situation while you're in the hallway. See, the hallway is the time of development the hallway is the time where you focus the hallway is the time when you go deep into the promises of God that he has for you because what you develop in the hallway 
you're going to need when that next door opens. I'm going to repeat that for the people that still sleep this morning around the world. I don't care if you're in Asia, you're in Africa, you're in Australia, you're in China, you're in Thailand that follow me, Japan. Don't get discouraged in the hallway. Don't get discouraged in the hallway. Don't get discouraged in the hallway. When God seems like he's not there, when you feel like you're all alone, when you feel like that nothing is moving, oftentimes that's when God is doing his greatest work. Because what he's developing in you in the hallway is going to be necessary for you to go through when he opens that next door. Because that next door is going to be so much bigger than you've experienced. That next door is going to be exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. All that stuff is good. But you got to have those tools that God is developing in you for that next level. And you say, well, Dr. Sure, what are the tools? What are you talking about? I'm talking about patience. I'm talking about character development. I'm talking about long suffering. I'm talking about forgiveness. I'm talking about having an apologetic spirit when you know that you're wrong. I'm talking about having a spirit of humility and meekness. And you say, well, Dr. Short, I don't want to have all those things. Well, you don't want to get to that next level and you're going to stay in the hallway. It's not the fact that God is not doesn't want to take you there. He knows that if you don't develop these qualities that I'm talking to you about, you're not going to excel in that next level. <laughs> it just doesn't happen like that. It kind of reminds me of my daughter is learning how to drive, right? She, she thinks she knows how to drive. She's only been driving with a permit for three or four days. And she said, I got the hang of it. You know, Dad, I'm in this Lexus. I got the hang of it. And I, now I need to drive your Maserati. I'm like, hey. <laughs> you still in the hallway. And as my grandma would say, sweetie, you still green. <laughs> How many of you guys had a muddier out there before? And then you just got your learner's license or you just got your license. You say, honey, I love you, but I ain't finna ride with you because you still green. <laughs> well, maybe it's just me. Maybe you got to be from Columbus or Georgia to know what somebody green. Somebody greens, man. That just simply means you're not ready yet. You're not ripe enough for me to trust you with my life. Especially in a Maserati when you barely know how to drive a Lexus. So what am I saying? What am I saying is this. We're talking about being green. We talk about the hallway. We also can talk about the green room. I've been in the green room before when I've been on television. I've been on, you know, uh, on the radio. I've been in the green room before. And the green room is a room of preparation. The green room is the room that you stay in to get prepared. So when the lights turn on, you're ready to go. And that green room should not be taken lightly. Or you can call it the hallway. The hallway of hope. Because that next level, man, you are going to need all those tools that God is developing in you, for you, to help you sustain and be everything that he called you to be in that next level. And going back to this word of meekness, I know everybody saying, oh, well, Dr. Shore, I don't want to seem meek because meek seems weak. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Meekness, the definition of meekness is strength under control. Jesus was the definition of meekness. Jesus was steel and yet he was velvet. He was kind but yet he also had a swag about him. You say, well, Dr. Short, well, I don't know if Jesus had a swag about him. He did. Man, Jesus called the Pharisees whitewashed tombs. He called them sons of vipers because they were putting the law on people that was so heavy that they couldn't even keep it themselves. Hypocrites. <laughs> you know what kind of swear you got to call somebody those kind of words? Those are like four letter words we use right now. That's right. And not only that, Jesus has so much swag. I don't even know why I got off topic, but I'm going to just go ahead and go in on you. Jesus has so much swag that the Bible says Jesus flipped over the table of the, the money changers in the temple and whipped them out. Made a whip and whipped them out. You mean to tell me that's not swag? You mean to tell me, you know, this it had to be a skinny dude 
that look all frail with blonde hair and blue eyes the one that we see hanging on a, no man <laughs> that's not the Jesus of the Bible that might be the Jesus in somebody's mind that's not the Jesus was a carpenter in order to be a carpenter man he didn't have electric tools he did manual labor he walked everywhere he went man Jesus was cut up Jesus was strong <laughs> Jesus didn't take no junk man <laughs> I ain't gonna even go there, man. I'm gonna leave that alone for a minute. But anyway, go, I, I digress a little bit. Back to what I'm telling you, the tug of war, man. We all go through situations called the tug of war in life, man. We have a tug of war in our relationship, in our marriages, in our finances, in our business, on our job. But guess what? You're not pulling alone. And if you are, you're crazy. Don't pull alone, man. We have... We have angels, the Bible said, are assigned to us, man. We have, we have the Holy Spirit, who's our counselor, who's our gift, gifting. We have Jesus, our, you know, our 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 kinsman redeemer. Not only that, man, Jesus has given you friends. You have friends that should be holding your ladder. You have you should have friends that should speak into your life you have friends that should be able to tell you the truth in love if you don't have those kind of friends around you let me ask you this are you that type of friend because the only kind of friend that you can expect for somebody to be for you is the friend that you are for somebody else man that's a word right there so today i just want to encourage you man in this tug of war you're not alone you're not alone and i pray the Ephesians 3, 20 over you that God is going to do exceedingly abundantly more than you can ever ask, think, or imagine. And I want to pray with you right now. Lord, in the name of Jesus, those that can see me and hear me right now, Lord, those that are struggling, Lord, I know that some are struggling in a relationship. Lord, I know that some, some somebody out there is trying to find their significant other. Lord, I know there's somebody out there that feels feel feel that doesn't feel worthy that everybody else is getting married except for them lord i pray that you bring them a significant other lord that somebody is gonna build them up and help grow them spiritually physically emotionally financially lord i pray that there are some that are struggling their finances some that that due to coronavirus lord they are getting set back after set back after set back in their business Lord, I pray that you lift their business up. Lord, I pray that you put them on a hill that you don't, they don't even know how they got there. I pray for them. I pray whatever they're going through, Lord, that you are with them. They're not alone. In Jesus' name, grace life. Peace.